Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, and in this video, we're going to be checking out Moto G Stylus tips and tricks. So stay tuned as we check out a variety of different hidden features about the device. So these are my Moto G Stylus tips and tricks. The first thing I want to show you is how to get a battery percentage up in the top right corner. So by default, you don't get a percentage. So you don't really know exactly what your battery capacity is currently at. So to get the battery percentage, pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in battery. And then from here, you'll see battery percentage. So tap on that. And then right here, turn on battery percentage. And now you can see up in the corner, it does indeed now say what the battery percentage is. So it doesn't matter where you are throughout the operating system, you're always gonna have the battery percentage right there. Now, in addition to that, there's a variety of different toggles within the battery menu here. So you can see your usage details to keep track of what apps are using the most amount of battery and also the pace that your phone's depleting its battery. You can also access battery saver mode. You can turn on adaptive battery, which will limit the battery usage for apps that you don't use often. And the device will also tell you the last full charge and the screen usage since full charge. So a lot of helpful information toggles here for you to get the most out of your phone's battery. The next thing I wanna show you is an easy way to take a screenshot. Now, the first way is that you can just hold the volume down and power button for a second, and you can take a screenshot that way. But there's an even cooler way that you can do a screenshot, and it's gesture-based. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, and then search three, and then you'll see three finger screenshot. Now, once you're there, go to try it out. So follow the directions. It says, with three of your fingers spread slightly apart, touch and hold onto the screen. Excellent. All right, I did a good job there. So we're gonna turn that on. I just take three of my fingers, hold them down onto the display for a second there, and it will take a screenshot very quickly. So that's just one of two different ways that you can take a screenshot with the Moto G Stylus. Now by default, we get gesture-based navigation with the phone. Now there's a lot of perks to that. You know, it reminds me a lot of the type of navigation that we get with the iPhone 11, for example. But if you do want the traditional Android navigation buttons, you can certainly bring those back. So let me show you how to do that. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in nav, and you'll see system navigation settings right there. Tap on that, and you can see we have two different options. So we have gesture navigation, which we have right here. In addition to that, you can adjust the sensitivity, which is pretty cool. But if you wanna to return to the three button navigation, just tap on three button navigation. And then now you'll see at the bottom of the display, we now have the classic Android navigation buttons here. So you can go back, you can go home, you can hold for Google Assistant, and you can go to your recent apps. So for those of you that prefer this over gesture-based navigation, there you go. The next trick that I wanna show you is how to quickly access the camera. So by default, when you double tap on the power button, it pulls up Google Assistant. And to be honest, I don't really need that feature too much. You can access Google Assistant in plenty of other ways anyway, so I don't need to use this double tap on the power button to get to that. So if I wanna change this so that I can double tap on that button to pull up the camera, it's very easy. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, then from there, type in gestures. It's gonna be under the gesture menu. So go to gestures, go to there again. And then from there, you'll see right here, double press power key. So by default, like I said, double pressing on the power key will take you over to the Google Assistant. You can also set it to do nothing. So that's a possibility if you want, but you can also have it launch the camera. So we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna double tap on this button. Oh, and that's interesting. I didn't even realize this. It will give me an option of Snapchat or the camera. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna do the camera though. I'm just gonna do just once for now. And you can see it does pull up the camera. Now you can set it to always, so that it always does pull up the camera, but that Snapchat shortcut is pretty interesting. I could definitely see that coming in handy for a lot of people. If you wanna quickly jump over to Snapchat, you know, you don't have to navigate around the phone to do that you can just double tap on the power button instead. So that's like a secret feature within a secret feature. Now there are some other interesting gestures, so I definitely recommend 
kind of going through this whole list here to see which ones interest you. But one of them is quick capture, so you can twist your wrist twice quickly to open up the camera. That's been something that Motorola has had for a long time, so we'll try that out right now. And then again, it gives you an option of whether you want to do Snapchat or the standard camera. So that's cool too. So it seems like the operating system here treats Snapchat as just a regular camera app. So that's interesting. The next option here is called Swipe to Shrink. So you can make the screen smaller with a simple swipe. So we're going to turn that on, try that out. So we're going to swipe from the middle into the corner. And you can see just like that, I was able to shrink the screen. So since the display on the phone is so large, this is a great way to access any part of the interface with a single hand. And then from there, you can continue to navigate around the device as you normally would. And then to get out of this, pull down the shade and then go to tap to restore. And things are now restored. There's also a fast flashlight. So if you want a quick way to turn on the flashlight, just do two chopping motions. And there we go. Flashlight's now on. Do that again and turn the flashlight off. Let's turn that on one more time. There we go, and off again. Cool, that works really well. You can also turn on swipe fingerprint for notifications. So if you turn that on, instead of going up to the top and pulling down to access the notifications, just swipe down on the fingerprint sensor. So that's really quick and easy. And you can also swipe on there to return it back to the shut position. The next feature I wanna show you involves putting the phone face flat to put it in do not disturb mode so that it doesn't ring. So to do that, pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to the search, type in flip, and you'll see right here, flip for DND. So flip for do not disturb. So make sure that's on. I already turned it on because I've been using it, but make sure that's on. And then all you have to do is put the phone face flat and you'll feel it vibrate. And now it's on do not disturb. But then as soon as you pick up the phone, it takes it out of Do Not Disturb, so that's really cool. So I like the standard keyboard. One downside to it is that you can see here, we have numbers and letters kind of mixed in together up top. Now you can easily access these numbers, but it takes one more tap. So if you want dedicated number keys in this first panel here, just go to the gear here. That'll take you over to the settings. Go to preferences, and then you'll see right here number row. So turn on number row. Now, when we go back, you'll see that there is now a dedicated number row. So pretty cool, and I definitely think that's something that most people would want on their phone. Now this next thing that I wanna show you is kind of basic, but also important. So by default, the screen will go into sleep mode pretty quickly. So I typically will adjust that so that the screen does stay on a bit longer. So to do that, go to your settings, go to display, and then from here, you're gonna see screen timeout. So you can set it to anywhere from 15 seconds to 30 minutes. I just do 30 minutes because I've been doing a lot of videos about this phone lately, but I feel like a normal amount of time would be one to two minutes. So by default, you get these little notification dots. And I personally think they're kind of gimmicky. So to turn those dots off, you're gonna hold onto the home screen, go to home settings, and then you're gonna see notification dots. And then you can pick certain apps that you wanna turn those off for, or go to advanced, and then turn off notification dots completely. And now you'll see that the dots have now gone away. So one of the signature features with Moto G Stylus, of course, is the actual stylus itself. Now there are a variety of different settings that you might want to change to get the most out of the stylus. So go to the gear here and you'll see the various stylus settings. So one of the things that you wanna turn on definitely is record last removal. So essentially it will keep track of the last time that the stylus has been removed so that if you happen to lose the stylus, the phone will tell you where you were, where it was last removed from the device. So potentially that would be the location where the stylus might still be. So we're gonna allow Moto Note to access the device's location all the time. And you can see that the last removal has already been recorded. So that's a really nice feature because the stylus is pretty tiny and you certainly will not wanna lose it. Now when the stylus is removed, you do see these various shortcuts on the side you do though have the ability to adjust that so that it shows nothing. You can also have it launch a certain app when the stylus is removed. So you can have it launch Moto Note, for example. So let me put the stylus back into the phone. So we're within the OS here. I'm gonna remove the stylus and it immediately does pull up Moto Note. Now it is already set by default for this app to pull up when the display is off, but not when it's on. So that might be something you want. That might not be something you want but at least you do have the ability here to make those adjustments. Finally, if you're concerned about the display turning off while you're looking at it, we do have attentive display. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in 
attentive, and you'll see right there attentive display, make sure that's on, and essentially it'll prevent the screen from dimming or going to sleep while you're looking at it. So if you are one of those people that wants to have maybe a shorter display on time, but you also don't want the display to turn off when you're looking at it, then essentially this will allow Moto Actions to take pictures and record video. So once you turn this on, the screen will remain on, it will not dim as long as you are looking at it. So this concludes my tips and tricks video about the Moto G Stylus. If I happen to find more tips and tricks that are worth including in a video, then I will make a follow up to this one. But I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about the device. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.